Hey, uh, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here. I am still alive. And, uh, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> just been uh, pretty quiet off the mic here for a little bit. Been uh, working quite a bit and uh, just been staying pretty busy there. So uh, I haven't had too much time to interact here on the channel, but uh, everything looks good still. I'm surprised Yellowstone is still uh, running. The uh, webcam, that is. Uh, it's been, uh, I think, second or third day in a row without any uh, shutdowns or any kind of freezes. Of course, now that I said that, we'll probably uh, see this thing freeze up tonight. Anyway, covering a little bit of earthquake activity out here real quick. Not going to make it a super long video. I remember a couple days ago, we had a period, period of uh, quietness, so to speak along the uh, Pacific Plate over here, especially on the Western Pacific over here. Now, we're definitely seeing a huge uptick in activity, uh, more specifically around the Japan area. <clears throat> now this is kind of worrisome in a way, uh, due, to, due to the fact uh, that there are multiple 5.0s and close to a 6, well, a 5.6 there, uh, in, in that specific area at a uh, fairly deep level uh, so definitely some large movement going on there. I wouldn't doubt it if we happen to see some larger uh, activity <clears throat> in that region. And like I say, a couple fives there, all on the northwest corner of the Pacific Plate. Uh, a little bit of activity down south here uh, on the southern section. A couple more fives. Kind of weird. Five seems to be the number uh, with over the past 24 hours, that is. And now, uh, now we're seeing a period of quietness over here on the Eastern Pacific. You know, it's just, it bounces back and forth and it's uh, definitely a, um, it's a thing that happens. I mean, we see activity bounce back and forth, uh, all the time like that. So it's just, we gotta keep an eye on things and see exactly, uh, where the pressure may be building up at. Uh, a little bit of activity over here in the Mediterranean region looks like it may be calming down. We are seeing a little cluster of twos, of th twos and threes, but these are older earthquakes there. You can see the redder, red color rings indicating uh, some older uh, data there on the earthquake 3D globe. But uh, a little bit of activity in Oklahoma as well. Quite a bit of severe weather uh, in that part of the country today, down through Texas and also uh, I guess the Arkansas region as well. Quite a bit of uh, severe weather golf ball size hail, all that good stuff. I know it's not good stuff for the folks that uh, have to deal with the damage, but nonetheless, uh, it's weather and it's exciting to me. Exciting to me. I'll be over there next month anyway. Uh, we'll be doing some storm chasing live out there for uh, for an extended period. So uh, anyway, guys, um, you know, as far as the earthquake 3D globe, looks uh, pretty quiet, aside from the activity on the northwest and the southern section of the... Uh, Pacific Plate, the Pacific Ring of Fire. Covering Yellowstone real quick. Uh, the earthquake swarm continues, folks. These little spikes and whatnot are uh, no doubt uh, continued uh, swarming, I guess. It appears as though it may be intensifying just a tad bit. I don't. I hate saying that because, um, you know, it may just be a little period of uh, uptick right here. You can see the you know, the little cluster right there. Uh, but I hate saying that because sometimes it just does this and it will completely calm down. And then other times it will really ramp up and uh, we'll see a, a huge outbreak in the earthquake activity there on that uh, northwest corner of the Yellowstone National Park over here. But uh, for the most part, uh, just some light, very light activity occurring with this earthquake swarm there. Uh, let's take a look at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network Trimmer map. And uh, you're gonna see here in just a second a large, large increase here. I've seen this earlier in activity in Northern California. Northern California, actually Northern Sacramento Valley. They're just south of Redding, California in the valley. Now this here is trimmer detection, meaning the uh, plates. You got the North American plate over here towards the uh, east. And the Juan de Fuca plate, trying to go underneath it here over towards the uh, the west over here. Underneath here. Underneath here is where you're picking up this trimmer detection or trimmer movement. 
uh, called the Cascadia Subduction Zone right here, guys. Stretches up through Vancouver Island, down through uh, Washington here, Oregon, and into Northern California where it's ending right along here. Uh, ultimately, the San Andreas Fault somewhat intertwines here, and uh, it, it's it's a part. It's, this is all a complex system of faults, guys, but a large increase right here in Northern California is something we haven't seen in a while. So this is interesting activity nonetheless. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at the real-time <coughs> trimmer here and see what it's picking up. This here is the last three hours. Uh, not a whole lot. You can see a couple red spikes here. Uh, six. Let's go to the last six hours. You can see the activity there in Northern California picking up, ramping up a little bit. And then uh, last 12, you can see it really ramping up. 24 is when we're seeing the uh, large increase in uh, activity there. So, uh, yeah, interesting activity. We're not seeing any kind of surface quakes from this activity at all. A couple small sporadic, well, not sporadic, but just really tiny ones here. Uh, one point, uh, where's this one here? Willows, 1.7 near Willows, California. Not uh, a big earthquake. Let me check the depth the depth on that real quick here. Let me see here. 1.7, it's almost a two, I guess. 3.6 miles. Um, so very, you know, I, I wouldn't say super shallow, but definitely a smaller earthquake there. But uh, we're not seeing any kind of large movement here on the surface with that uh, subducting going on there in Northern California there, the uh, trimmer detection that's being picked up. So, uh, it's interesting guys, like I say, we've always, uh, I've always wondered, you know, if, if uh, the trimmer being detected is a good thing or a bad thing. I guess when it stops moving, when we don't have the uh, trimmer detection being picked up, then maybe it's a time to worry. But then again, if you think about it, uh, especially like uh, today, seen all the activity in Northern California also Southern Oregon in uh, in I guess in large numbers there are quite a bit of activity uh, on the southern section of the Cascadia subduction zone what does that mean for the rest of it you know up here north does that mean uh, pressure is increasing in that region if so you know that's that's more of a risk of an earthquake on the uh, Cascadia subduction zone there a mega thrust earthquake so, you know, it's it's kind of like a teeter-totter. You just don't know if it's good or if it's bad. You know, I think, in a way, it it's kind of bad. <laughs> but that's just my own two, my, my own two cents. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that for sure. And uh, see exactly uh, what happens. But anyway, folks, I'm going to cut it short here and uh, get back to uh, doing what I was doing. And... Uh, Hope you guys have a good weekend, or uh, what's left of it. I guess tomorrow's Monday already. Gosh darn it. Anyway, uh, you guys take care. Um, be earthquake prepared, as always. And, uh, you know, stay safe out there no matter what you're doing. Better to be safe than sorry, folks. We'll catch you all a little bit later. Peace out.